Sometimes the simplest of questions give us the most interesting answers. Codex Sinaiticus is the Greek text that tipped the balance of the world's Bible text scholars away from the King James and Bibles like it to something called the critical text. It became one of the most important and most studied manuscripts of all time. Look, it even has its own web page. So we should be able to ask simple questions and get simple answers, right? Let's find out. Here's a child's question. What color is Sinaiticus? The answer will bring you an embarrassing surprise. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. First, I've got to thank Jack McElroy, author of the amazing book, Which Bible Would Jesus Use?, for sending me his own Sinaiticus facsimile to check out for myself. And I got to thank Stephen Avery for his great research. We're doing a lot together. And Mark Mitchie for his work with the graphics. I am so amazed at what I'm going to show you. But let me tell you a story. Back in the 1800s, there was a guy named Constantin Tischendorf. He went out to discover ancient Bibles. The guy who helped pay for the trip was King Frederick of Saxony. So Tischendorf went down to the St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai Peninsula and brought back two sections, 43 leaves that he grabbed or cut out of an Old Testament. Then he gave those as a present to King Frederick and named them after him. People who finance your trip expect things like that. Right around that time, 1844-45, a couple of guys, including a religious guy named Porfiry Uspensky, saw the rest of the document and described it as snow white. And he took a few leaves back with him. And people went to Germany and, again, saw Frederick's leaves for themselves, snow white. Fifteen years later, Tischendorf came back with 347 other leaves. He held on to them a couple of months in Cairo, while he and a couple of unnamed guys helped him. Now, in the 19th century, People were really into finding ancient documents. Sometimes they paid good money for them. So you can bet that faking documents to make them look ancient was a huge business. They'd stain the documents and they'd make them look darker and change the ink so it would look lighter and They'd rough up the paper or parchment, and voila, a brand new ancient document. Well, after those two months with Tischendorf in Cairo, he let others see this Sinaiticus, and guess what? It wasn't Snow White anymore. It was stained and darkened, and the ink was lightened, and the whole thing looked old now. What happened to the color? But that's not all. There's also sheets of Sinaiticus that are kept in libraries in the Egyptian peninsula, in Russia, in Germany, and 347 in England as well. But a few years ago, a number of scientists decided to use the internet to bring them all together as complete a Sinaiticus as anyone has ever seen, with high-definition photos. They even used color bars to calibrate the pictures so they're color accurate. I got all 822 pictures on a single photo. Want to take a look? Even at this size, I bet you can tell the pages that are Frederick's apart from Tischendorf's. Now that's regular color. I added some shadows, see if you can see that better. Can you see the parts that are King Frederick's? 
How about if I added a little shine to it in addition? Does that make it clearer? Yeah. That's quite a difference, isn't it? See, someone is being dishonest. But there's more. If you spend 500 to 8 hundred dollars, you can get a huge book with all the discovered pages of Sinaiticus. In fact, it says, the images taken according to agreed technical standards were processed to represent faithfully the actual appearance of the pages. And then they were reduced by about 5%. Okay? It said they also made sensitive adjustments since the appearance of the parchment and ink varied somewhat between the leaves at the four libraries. Okay? So let me show you what they say Sinaiticus looks like. Ready? There. Do you see it? Do you see the difference? Neither do I. See, these pages look the same. Doesn't matter where I look. So let me ask you a really important question. What color is Sinaiticus? If the scientists with their color bars are right, those same two pages I just showed you, this is with the color bars. If the scientists with the color bars are right, then there are some major color differences. But if they're right, then the publisher of that big book just might have photoshopped the color so that it was all the same, pretty much. You just saw it with your own eyes. And if Frederick's pages are right, then Tischendorf's 347 sheets were intentionally stained to make the papers and the ink look old. Ink, lighter, page, darker. One guy on the internet said, no, you're wrong. The Sinaiticus has been tested by hundreds of people. Nope. Not a single test has been done on the age of the parchment or of the ink. They were set to test it in April of 2015. Then they changed the guy over the project and suddenly the testing was canceled. Why? What are they afraid they would find? Not the scientists, I mean, the powers that be. What are they afraid of finding out? That the Sinaiticus is actually not an ancient document after all? That it was a modern forgery that was faked to make it look old? That would explain why it's never been mentioned in any clear way anywhere until 1844. But Sinaiticus is the reason we took out the second yet in John 7, 8, making Jesus a liar. Sinaiticus tipped the balance so that we'd have the blind man believing in the Son of Man, not the Son of God. It also took out the words, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him in John 9, 38, taking away that Jesus is God to be worshipped. Not even Vaticanus removes that one. And of course, Sinaiticus is the reason that we have <clears throat> these warning notes in the last 11 verses of most copies of the Gospel of Mark, including King James Bibles. Check out my Ryrie, for instance, saying we can't believe them. I'll have to give Mark 16 its own vlog, so don't worry about that. But could it be that they were afraid that we would find out that they colored the truth all this time? Let me make this plain. The evidence shows me, right now, 2016, that Sinaiticus, no matter its age, was Snow White. With dark lettering. But that doesn't look as old as men want. So men aged it. And the publishers of this very expensive book over here also changed the color of the pages so that they would all match. I cannot think of a single godly reason why they would change it. So it's forcing me to think 
that the Sinaiticus is a sham, a modern counterfeit, and it is part of an agenda. Don't believe me? Go look at the evidence yourself. Watch this video over again. Check me out. I don't believe Sinaiticus anyway. I have no horse in this race. I've got nothing to lose by finding out. But there are people who have a great deal to lose. They translate, produce, and print almost every Bible in the world, and they teach that Sinaiticus was a real ancient Bible. And of course, it's also a big part of the coming One World Bible for One World Religion. I have so much more to say on this, but it's not hopeless. There is a bright light. You can trust one Bible. In English, it is the King James Bible. 400 plus years tried, tested, and proved. And it was never found because it was never lost in the first place. God kept his promise to preserve his words. I trust it with all my heart. I hope you will too. God bless you and have a wonderful day.